In this video, I'll cover the slice curve brush using the DynaMesh group function and creating mesh thickness using the DynaMesh shell feature. Alright, so we've made some pretty good progress, but let's go ahead and continue to refine this mesh using a couple new uh, DynaMesh techniques that we haven't gone over yet. Next we're going to talk about is actually modifiers. Uh, modifiers, when you hold down Control shift you'll see this uh, little icon up here changes, and by default, Control shift brings up Select Rect. And what that is, is your rectangular selection, and that's what you use to show and hide pieces of your mesh. Uh, but instead of doing that, we want to change that to Slice Curve. And uh, an easy way to do that is to hold down Control shift click on here, and then instead of Select Rect, choose Slice Curve. And Slice Curve is a way, uh, using conjunction with DynaMesh, to actually slice up pieces of your meshes. Um, when you drag out Slice Curve, you'll see it looks a lot like uh, Clip Curve, as in you get a line with a gradient on it, and uh, but it's different. It actually creates polygroups as opposed to pushing geometry back towards the uh, gradient. Um, I'm going to go ahead and hold down Space Bar and move this off to the side so it doesn't do anything. And I need to figure out how I want to slice this up because it's kind of passing through his mouth in an awkward way. So what I'm going to do is turn to the side here, hold down Control Shift to bring up my slice curve, and we'll go ahead and drag this line up. And just like Clip Curve, wherever that gradient's pointing towards is where it's going to slice towards. So I'm going to go right up the face here, and if I hit Alt once, it's going to make a Bezier curve like this, but I don't want that. I want it sharp. So instead, I'm going to hold down Control Shift, drag this line out, and I'm going to hit it twice, and that's going to give me a nice sharp line. I'm going to let that drop, and you're going to see, because I have Polyframe turned on, it's actually split this uh, into two separate poly groups. So we've got a yellow and a red one here. And if you Control Shift click, you can actually separate your poly groups out. And we have a slight problem, and that's that we have these big holes created where our new poly groups are. And you can actually fix that by going, you can select this top piece by holding Control Shift and clicking on it. You can go to Geometry, delete hidden so you get rid of that bottom part and then you can go to do this run this close holes operation um, but instead of doing that I'm actually gonna let DynaMesh do that for me so it's a little bit faster a little bit easier um, cool new function in DynaMesh is you can actually instead of just having project on we'll go ahead and turn group on as well and what that's gonna do is any poly groups you have which we've created using the slice, slice curve brush it's actually gonna create uh, two separate closed meshes so with the group turned on go ahead and just click uh, control drag and rerun the DynaMesh operation. And now you'll see, I'm going to turn Polyframe off, these are two separate meshes now that are completely closed. So Control Shift drag, or Control Shift click, and you can see the two separate pieces. Um, we don't need this bottom piece anymore, so I'm going to Control Shift click uh, this top one, and then just do a delete hidden. So we've kind of cleaned that mesh up. And now we have another glaringly obvious problem, that's because um, these holes right here aren't symmetrical, so we've actually clipped through one of them, uh, but not a big deal. So we'll go ahead and fix that by doing Slice Curve again. I'm going to turn on Polyframe so we can see our polygroups. And with Slice Curve selected, I'm going to drag out here, and I'm just going to change this shape just a little bit. Just to, It's actually a little bit more interesting. Go ahead and uh, slice that up. And again, I'm going to rerun that operation with Group turned on, so it makes its own separate piece. Click this one to keep it, and go ahead and do a Delete Hidden. Um, it didn't do it across the x-axis, which isn't that big of a deal. All I need to do is go to uh, Mirror and Weld here, and it's across the x-axis by default, which this guy is. So I'm going to hit Mirror and Weld, and it actually uh, mirrored it the wrong way. I want to actually mirror this side over to this side. Easy way to do that is go under Deformation, click the Mirror button, and then go back, back up and click Mirror and Weld. And that way we get nice, um, nice clean transition on both sides. All right, let's go ahead and make this helmet hollow so we can actually put it on a head. Uh, let's go ahead and clean this up first, though. So I'm going to hold down Control shift and change this back to Clip Curve. And we'll just use this to clip this mesh back. Just a tad. And it doesn't matter if it's perfect. We're actually going to make this hollow. But um, if you want to, you can go ahead and smooth that out there. And in order to make this hollow, uh, you can use a really cool uh, function that DynaMesh has. And if you go over here to the DynaMesh menu, you'll see that there's a Create Shell option. So in order to do that, let's go ahead and do a hit B to bring up our brush menu, hit I to go to insert, let's go ahead and insert a sphere. Uh, and to make this thing hollow, I need to do a subtractive mesh. So I'm going to hold down Alt and drag out a sphere. And it's going to cut through here, I don't want to do that, so I'm going to actually move this sphere back. So it's going to punch a hole right here, but it's also going to add interior thickness. And the easiest way to uh, explain that is just to show it to you. So we've got our uh, subtractive uh, mesh here. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and control drag to unmask. 
and then I'm going to do, instead of just doing control dragging again and cutting that sphere out, I'm actually going to do hit this create shell button. What that's going to do is cut a hole in here and it's also going to create an interior thickness um, all through this gorilla and you can see right here really perfectly um, give me a thickness all the way through and, and that thickness is based on this number right here uh, this looks a little bit thin to me so let's go ahead and do a thickness of say 10 go ahead and undo that and I'm gonna go ahead and clip a little bit better of shape here so let's go ahead and control shift drag or control shift click this mask it bring this back and we'll go ahead and scale this insert mesh up and using transpose let's go ahead and move it out Gotta move this into place here. There we go. We gotta give us a little bit better result. And then we'll go ahead and unmask again. And we'll go ahead and do the create shell. This time with a thickness of 10. There we go. So now we can actually get a guy's head in here. Um, if you want to, you can go ahead and hold down shift and kind of smooth this interior out. Be careful though when you're when you start creating shells because sometimes your smooth brush or whatever brush you're actually using can go through the mesh. An easy way to get rid of that um, functionality is to go to brush, scroll down here to auto masking and turn on back face mask. Um, you can see it's on for the uh, standard brush but I've hold shift it's actually not on for my smooth brush. So go ahead and click that on. So now when I smooth out this interior, and then turn around to the side, this is all left alone. So all those back faces are safe. Um, I could go ahead and clip all this out, but I'll show you another method. It's a little bit more surgical. Let's go ahead and mask the pieces of this mesh that we no longer want. Let's go ahead and hold down control. And with mask pin, let's go ahead and get rid of all this stuff here. We don't want this anymore. So instead of slicing or anything like that, we'll just use a mask. And then over here in these menus, let's go to the polygroups menu. And what we're going to do is click uh, group mask clear mask. That's going to group everything into its own polygroup that's mask and then clear the mask. So we turn on polyframe and then clip that, click that button. It went ahead and made a polygroup here and cleared that mask. So now again, because this is a, its own polygroup, if we go back up here to the DynaMesh, we still have group on. So when I control drag, it's going to make this its own separate polymesh again. And it's going to go ahead and fill these holes. Looks like it left us a little bit of garbage here that we weren't able to get to, but that's okay. We'll go ahead and delete hidden, and then go back down to polygroups, and we'll do auto groups. What that's going to do is group all these little separate meshes into their own groups. So we can go ahead and control shift click this to isolate it, and then just do another delete hidden under geometry. And now we've got a nice clean mesh that we've uh, that we've cleaned up.